find the upper and lower sums for the area bounded between the graph of f of x equals x squared and the x-axis on the interval 0 to 2. Okay, so we're dealing with this portion of the parabola, f of x equals x squared on the interval 0 to 2, so it will go up to 4 on the y-axis, and it'll look something like this. Now what we're trying to do is use Riemann sums to find this area. And so the first thing we have to do is come up for come up with expressions for the base and the height of the rectangles that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using upper and lower sums. So it looks like in this case the lower sums will come from rectangles where we're using left endpoints. So we need an expression for uh, lowercase m sub i and upper sums look like they're coming from right endpoints because those rectangles go above the graph. So we need an expression for upper sums. So remember each rectangle, the there's going to be two types of rectangles we're using. There's the uh, the lower sums which will have a uh, base of delta x and a height of f of lowercase m sub i. That's for the uh, left endpoints. And there's also going to be the other rectangles where the base is delta x and the height is f of capital m sub i, or we're using the, the, the right endpoints. So what do we know? Well, delta x, or the width of the rectangle, delta x is equal to b minus a, or the length of the interval, over n, or in this case, delta x equals 2 over n. So this we're going to need. And the left endpoints, which we, we use lowercase m sub i, well, that's equal to a plus so the, the, the beginning value in the interval. In this case, it's a 0, but a plus i minus 1 times delta x, or in this case, 0 plus i minus 1 times delta x, which is 2 over n. So those left endpoints will be i minus 1 times 2 over n. Okay, so we're going to need this. These are, let's say, left endpoints. And for the right endpoints, which in this case will give us our upper sum, we use capital M sub I for that, and those are equal to A plus I times delta X, or in this case, zero, which is A, zero plus I times two over N, or two I over N. All right, so now we're going to use the definition of the definite integral or the fact that 0 to 2 of x squared dx, the area bounded between the graph of x squared and the x-axis on the interval 0 to 2 is equal to, well, it's equal to the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity of the sum of those rectangles, i goes from 1 to n, of f of lowercase m sub i delta x, and is also equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of those rectangles. I goes from 1 to n of f of capital M sub i delta x. So we've discussed this already, that you could use uh, left endpoints or you could use right endpoints. So before we deal with the limit and the exact area, let's let's deal with the summations. First. Let's deal with the sums. So. Let's, let's start with this one. So we'll get an expression for the 
sum of the rectangles using left endpoints, and then we'll deal with this one. So let's get in, let's get expressions for those sums, and then at, once we do that, once we get all the work done, then we can apply the limits. All right. So let's start with this guy number one, and then we'll do this number two. So for number one. The summation as i goes from 1 to n, or adding up the area of n rectangles, where the area of each rectangle is base times height, or in this case, height times base. The height is f of m sub i times delta x. Okay, so that's summation i goes from 1 to n. So we're f of lowercase m sub i, that means we're taking this, the lowercase m sub i, and plugging it in for x, plugging it into our function. So we need to square that. So we'll have, oh, not t, that should be i minus 1. Times 2 over n. So that's our x value, and we're squaring that, times delta x, which is 2 over n. So let's square everything here, multiply everything. All right, we'll have summation i goes from 1 to n. Well, we'll have uh, 2 squared, which is 4, times another 2, which is 8. So there's 8. Then we'll have n squared on the bottom times another n on the bottom, so that's n to the third power. I'm just bringing my constants out front. And then that's multiplied by i minus 1 squared. And since the 8 and the n cubed, remember n is a constant, so the 8 is a constant, the n cubed is a constant, we can move those out front. So 8 over n cubed times the summation. i goes from 1 to n. Now let's foil this out. i minus 1 times i minus 1, or i squared minus 2i plus 1. All right, so let's, let's actually bring this, bring this down here so we have more room. So we can we could apply well we could apply some properties of summation. So we're going to basically take the summation term by term, right? So we'll have an eight over n to the third power. And then for the summation, we have the summation i goes from one to n of i squared minus two times the summation, i goes from 1 to n of i, plus the summation, i goes from 1 to n of the 1. All right, so we're just basically splitting up that summation. And now, we can apply some formulas of summations that we've covered previously. So the formula for the sum of the first n squared numbers, or the summation of i squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. Then we have a formula for the summation of the first n positive whole numbers, or the summation of i. So there's a 2 times. And the formula for summation of i is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And then the last summation, well, there's n terms, but each of those terms is the number 1. So it's 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times. So that's going to be equal to just n. Okay, so now we have some simplifying to do. Uh, it looks like the first thing we could do is cancel off those twos. 
So we'll have eight over n to the third power. We just have a lot of algebra to do right now. n times n plus one times two n plus one. So we have to multiply that all out and that will give us two n to the third power plus three n to the second power plus n all divided by six. If you want, you could pause the video for a couple of moments and just verify that by multiplying it out. We've got a minus n squared minus n. So this, this negative sign here is distributing to the n times n and the n times one. So it'll be a minus n squared and a minus n. And then there's a plus n. So again, that looks like it cancels nicely. Minus n plus n. And we could get a common denominator here so we combine those two terms. Okay, looks like we're getting closer and closer to a simplified expression. So you've got eight over n cubed and the plus three n squared and the minus six n squared. Okay, so that'll give us a minus three n squared. So two n to the third, minus three n to the second, plus n all divided by six. All right, so we are now getting, getting close. So let's distribute. Let's distribute that eight over n to the third power. So that should give us 16 n to the third over six n to the third or eight over three for the first term. 24 n squared over six n to the third. So that should be a four over n and eight n divided by six n to the third or four over three n to the second power. So here is our expression. And what this is, is the, left endpoint sum using n rectangles. This is the sum of all of the rectangles, if there's n of them, if we're using left endpoints. Now we'll do the same thing, the exact same process, now using right endpoints. So let's separate this. And the sum, i goes from one to n. So if we're adding up all of the rectangles, the n rectangles, where the area of each rectangle is f of capital M sub i times delta x. Remember, that's the height and that's the width. It might not be a bad idea to just state that here. Height times with. And from above, we already have our expression for the right endpoint. That was the 2i over n. So if I scroll back way up to the top, it was one of the first things we did. And that's right here. The right endpoints are 2i over n. Those are x values. So you have to plug those x values in for y to get the f of mi. So that's the summation. I goes from one to N of two I over N, which is the X value. Square it, because it's that, that's our function is X squared times Delta X, which is two over N, which we can simplify this. I goes from one to N, well, two squared is four. Then we have an I squared times another two. So that looks like eight I squared divided by N to the third power. So this, this N, this first N is getting squared times this other N. So that's N to the third power. 
and let's come down here. So we can write i goes from 1 to n. Let's give it that equal sign. The 8 and the n cubed, just like last time, those are constants. 8 over n cubed, and it's multiplied by i squared. And again, we have a formula for the i squared, the, the sum of the first n squared numbers. So that is 8 over n cubed times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. I guess we could cancel the 6 and the 8. We'll make that a 4 and a 3. So we could factor out, well not factor, we could, we could move the constants out front. So we have a 4 over 3n to the third. So we got the 4 on top, the n cubed, and the 3 over here. And that's multiplied by, well again, if we multiply this out, just like uh, in, the last, in, in the last part where we were doing left endpoints, that was 2n to the third power plus 3n squared plus n. All right, and this is shaping up pretty much exactly like the last one. A little bit simpler with the algebra because right endpoints are normally easier in terms of the algebra than the left endpoints. So we've got eight over three from that first term. We've got a four over n from the second term, the threes cancel and n squares cancel, and a four over three n squared, four over three n squared. And what this is, is the right endpoint sum. And again, using n Rectangle, so it's still an estimate. So we haven't taken limits yet. So now what we're going to do is apply a theorem that we've seen before. I think it was uh, in proving one of the special limits for the sine function, the sine theta over theta, if my memory serves me right. We'll apply the squeeze theorem. And what this, how, how we're going to apply the squeeze theorem is as follows. So we basically have an underestimate and an overestimate. All right, so our underestimate was the summation i goes from 1 to n of f of lower m sub i times delta x. So that was our underestimate using left endpoints. So that's going to be less than or equal to the exact area. And our upper estimate, which our overestimate, was using right endpoints. So i goes from 1 to n of f of capital M sub i delta x. So that was the sum using right endpoints. Okay, and then we actually saw we actually simplified both of these summations or evaluated these summations. And so for the uh, the one we did first for the left endpoints, that was eight over three minus four over n plus. 4 over 3n to the second power. And the one we just finished, just above this, the right endpoint sum, that was 8 over 3 plus 4 over n plus 4 over 3n squared. And now for the squeeze theorem. So what we could do is take the limit as the number of rectangles gets infinitely large. So we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity. 
of the lower sum or the underestimate will take the limit as n goes to infinity of the upper sum or the overestimate. And both of these limits are equal to, oh, we don't need the equal sign, both of these limits are equal to 8 over 3. So what we get is the exact area underneath the graph of f of x equals x squared is both greater than or equal to 8 thirds and less than or equal to 8 thirds. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the area must be exactly 8 thirds. All right, and that's a little, this is more work than, <clears throat> excuse me, this is more work than was necessary to just get the final answer. Because you can use, if, if our goal was just to, <coughs> excuse me, if our goal was just to solve the problem, you could always use either left endpoints or right endpoints. Both of them will always give you the same answer. But my goal here with this video was to go through the process of using both and showing that once you take the limits, they both give you the same answer. So the area under the graph of f of x equals x squared on the interval oops, 0 to 2 is exactly 8 over 3 square units, whatever the units are, it doesn't really matter. All right, so that does it for this. Um, it, it was a little more than 20 minutes. Uh, these problems shouldn't take you 20 minutes to do. I just I went through it very slowly and thoroughly and maybe did a little bit more writing and definitely more steps than is necessary if your goal is to just get that area, just get that final answer. Maybe it's, it's more like a six to eight minute problem if you're just going through it directly once you know what you're doing. Um, but hopefully this was uh, informative in terms of the, sort of the, the theory or the basis behind these types of problems. All right, that's it for this topic. Um, from here, uh, in my next video, I will talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, that's it for now.